Yosemite Day with Phil Guyman. I gotta clean the bike, because yesterday was a mudder. Big time mudder. And so I've got my coffee made, I've got my smoothie made, <clears throat> I'm ready to go. Uh, we're also, so I'm trying to film this individual video of me taking him to Yosemite, but I'm also trying to help him film his best retirement ever. So there's trying to like two videos in one day sort of thing, but I'm tr trying to lean towards more of like his video. So we'll see what uh, what kind of story we can tell here. But so far, this is day three. Day one, we rode in the fog and the snow and I forgot my gloves and I wore socks on my hands. Day two, we rode through the mud to some burnt trees. I took them to a barn, couldn't find a cookie. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure Yosemite is gonna be is gonna be good. It's always good. It's Yosemite. Let's go. Ah, oh, that was a close one. So we uh, headed into Yosemite um, because Yosemite is the go-to, the go-to ride. This is this is day three of the Phil extravaganza, and collab, uh, collab. yeah, the collab. Um, I would say the weather looks amazing. Um, Yosemite is going to be. I don't think there's going to be a lot of people here because it's kind of off season. Right. So I'm really excited. But we've had some rains. So the waterfalls on point. We uh, we dilly dallied quite a bit at his little cabin, doing some some videos for the intro and some other stuff that he's he's trying to do. He's gonna be a YouTube star. Casey Neistat, watch out! Phil Phil's coming for you, man. He's gonna he's gonna take you down. Who's that? <laughs> who's, that? who's who's Casey? Uh, so yeah, I'm excited. Uh, this is sweet. This is gonna be sweet. No burnt trees this time. this road to Yosemite a bunch of times and no matter what point of the year it is it always seems pretty busy look how empty this road is it, it's a good day so far great weather and uh, and no cars so I mean there's a few but to be able to go into Yosemite and not have to deal with like the tour buses good day he's having a little bit of trouble with his camera though have you ever been to Yosemite before Just... as a kid I went here with my parents at some point but it doesn't count if you're a kid you know <laughs> your memory as a kid here, sucks yourself. yeah I was in the back seat of like a rental car not like this So what's your uh, first initial impression of this view coming out of that tunnel? 
It's completely insane. It looks fake. It looks like we're on a green screen and that's like a... That's real. That's real water and then there's snow. The sky. <laughs> it's insane. Right? Yeah, it's so good. What's crazy is there's usually tunnel view is packed with yeah. people. Just all these people. No people. I, I mean, the season for Yosemite is about done. Like, probably in the next couple weeks, they'll probably close this road for snow. So, we, we lucked out, man. Yeah, it makes you want to just write poetry or something. You know? <laughs> yeah. Taking the scenery, snap some pics. It was awesome. But on the way into Yosemite, it was very warm. But holy smokes, on the backside, of the mountain and once we got down into the Yosemite Valley oh it was maybe 28 degrees 28 30 degrees it was really cold it got cold quick but since it's sort of off season man there was no one there we had the roads almost to ourselves I took them through these little uh, bike lane area where there are no cars it was so beautiful because again Yosemite is one of those things where it's amazing. It's beyond amazing. It's it's a life-changing experience. But when there's tons of tourists, it kind of ruins it. So we're cruising around. We go and we stop for at the little grocery store thing that they have there to get some food and kind of um, take a little regroup. And then someone was telling us there was a nice coffee shop, by the way. I'd actually never been to this coffee shop. I've never seen it. It's really hard to see it where you ride. So I never knew it was there. We hang out by the fire chat have some coffee and get prepared to climb out of the valley we get to a spot where when chris miller came i tried to lead him out for a kom but the strava messed up so then i kind of dipped out a little wider and went for the kom hoping that phil would just hang out on my rear wheel because my full-on max vo2 max effort is probably his zone three i was hoping to get some cool footage but again like i said Phil doesn't burn any matches he doesn't need to. It, it, unless, he's not going to pedal in anger uh, if there's no reason. So he's just cruised. And I smashed up. I snagged a KOM. to king. We uh, went through the tunnel and back up. back just in time because it's starting to get dark starting to get pretty cold but for the most part that Yosemite ride because no one was there was phenomenal it was it was it was good stuff he dug it a little hard to read Phil on his emotions on if he digs things or he doesn't dig things I'm pretty sure he was he was digging Yosemite pretty sure he was pumped on it we head back to Bass Lake he goes and washes up at his cabin and I prepare a dinner. I'm preparing a vegan dinner for him at my house. Yeah. Oosh. Give me a smoocher. Daddy! Hi. Hi, baby. Mm. Yeah. Hi. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Phil Guyman's gonna come back and we're gonna do dinner here at the house. Uh, my wife's trying to clean, but it's so hard to clean with kids. It's just you never get anything done. We're gonna do burgers and chili and potatoes and food that is awesome. So he comes over, he meets the family, and we did burgers, and chili, and veggies, and potatoes, and he smashed it. He smashed it all, so I think he liked it. It was good. It was good. I, I enjoyed it. Also, since we were not able to get him a cookie on the trip, my wife made him vegan chocolate chip cookies. 
Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. It's good hot. It's all melty. It was getting late and he was gonna leave pretty early in the morning on Saturday, but he was gonna do one last climb. Um, so we parted ways after an amazing killer Yosemite day and great dinner. I got ready for Saturday. Saturday morning, he was gonna do an effort up the big climb we had done the first day, Wednesday, which is my hometown climb. This is my climb. I ride it a lot. I think I've done it 50 times. And the KOM on it was an hour and four minutes or hour and three minutes, something of that sort, which is blazing. My fastest time was six minutes. I really felt though that there would be a, a point in 2018 where I could go for that KOM and it'd be cool. But Phil decided I'm going to smash any, any possibility of anyone ever getting the KOM on this climb ever again. I'm just gonna stamp it, it's mine. I honestly think that the KOM will, will stand forever. Light bike, skin suit, everything, and just smashes it. Again, for me, the, the climb was an hour and six minutes, and I'm looking at, and the KOM is an hour and four, I'm looking at the time that we started, and I'm thinking, man, he is going really fast. He is jamming. We get close to the top, and he's he's almost sub 50 minutes on this thing. I, I, I thought he was gonna go sub 50 minutes, which would just be insanity. And so he gets over to the top, 52 minutes, beats the KOM, by over 10 minutes, <laughs> which is, just shows you what an amateur, you know, amateur versus a, a, a pro, ex-pro. So even if, if he was on full on world tour form, he'd probably be able to shave another two minutes off that. Just shows you, man, there's levels to this. My computer went out like halfway up. Oh man, <coughs> you smashed it. Yeah. <coughs> How'd you feel? Pretty good. Like I paced all right, but I didn't know where I was when this thing stopped. <coughs> For the data nerds, do you know what you did power-wise? Um, probably average like 360 or something. I don't know, I wasn't really I just knew like about what mile it was going to end at and I was looking at that. Oh, okay. Always good to just do that and then just sit in the car. Yeah. <laughs> but at the top it was about 30 some odd degrees. So he just jumped back in the car and I took him down the descent. So it was just a one little effort, a one to the top. That was it. We got the footage. He got the KOM and uh, I was going to take him back to his cabin and he was going to leave. And he did. He left. <laughs> but so Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday morning, got to hang out with Phil Guyman, ex-pro, ex-world tour pro, and shoot some footage for his channel. The main idea was to shoot it for his channel and to do some cool stuff for his thing. You know, if I could piece together something like this video, and I, but the whole idea was to be committed to him. So I didn't want to be trying to film, I didn't want to try to film a ton of stuff of me because the goal was to help his channel. So a lot of those videos will be coming out on his, on his channel, you can check them out. And uh, I, I think overall, what a couple things I'd like to say is that one, Phil is an awesome guy for trying to really give back to the community with his fondos and his charities and that sort of thing. He writes books um, and now he's trying to get into YouTube. I mean, he's really trying to be in the public eye and I think for a lot of pros they just do their thing and then that's that they don't ever give you a, a, a peek into their world and I think Phil's doing a phenomenal job of trying to give you as much of a view into his world and give you content that we all want to see we all you know 
want to see the best of the best of the top guy do these type of things, do these rides, do these climbs, what their power is like, what's their psyche like. So I think that's awesome that he's really trying to dive into that full hard. The other thing is that his wealth of knowledge was so cool for me to pick apart, but just seeing how he conducts himself on the bike, obviously he's way fitter than I am. But for hit, that to never be a thing, and which I was super worried that was gonna be a thing, was never a thing. I probably could have rode way less hard, because I was, you know, sometimes pushing the, the envelope a little bit, going threshold, high zone three, low zone four, sometimes, just because I thought he was gonna get bored, that he was gonna be bored just noodling around. It was never a thing. I was always half wheeling him. Like, he wanted to go slower, it seemed like. And so it makes me think I need to do a better job of when I'm riding with other people or just myself that, man, you don't have to always do that, right? You can ride super slow and you can still enjoy it. Also, he never complained once, not once, not one single complaint other than like jokes, right? Just kind of joking around that we didn't get a cookie or whatever, but no legitimate complaints at all which I think there were a few legitimate complaints that could have been made. Um, but so that was, that was awesome, man. Phil, you're a cool guy. Thank you so much for coming up here and enjoying this part of the world. I hope to bring you up here in the summer. It's way better in the summer. And to you, the subscriber who made this happen because you commented on Phil Guyman's videos and it made him reach out to me. <laughs> yeah, thank you a lot. And as always, vegan cyclist. You. Yeah.